All right, welcome back to Do It Myself Garage. So my next step, um, I've got the bearings pressed on the pinion, and I've got everything, all the other stuff assembled on the hub. I got to get the bearing races in the axle now. Um, so I've got this bearing race. This is for the pinion. That's just sitting down in here, and I'm gonna try to walk him in with a, with a two by four. If I can't get it. Uh, I'll go get a, uh, a driver set, but uh, these came out of here pretty easily. Oh, geez, it's just tapping in there. So, this should go in pretty easy. Uh, I don't foresee a problem. Uh, main thing, anytime you're doing a bearing, it's got to go in evenly. You don't want to get them started crooked. So that's literally why I was tapping on it by hand. Sure enough, yep, she's going in real easy. Um, I'll wipe all this out. Any wood or anything I'm getting in here, I'm not worried about. I'm more worried about getting that bearing to, to bottom out. It had, I had it all wiped out underneath it, so I'm not worried about that. could use a bronze or a brass driver pin however that is metal if you slip you can still damage this race so you're not going to damage anything with a with a piece of wood all right so I got the driver set all right you're not going to really be able to see this but this fits on that bearing perfectly and actually might be the next one up so here's the bearing and it doesn't quite fit down in there you don't want to use that one you want to use this one so it actually sits down in there and presses on this upper edge this is aluminum so it won't damage it As you hit it, you'll hear the tone change. Um, I just got it on. Uh, I was hitting it a few more times. I finally started to get it to move. And when it hits the bottom, it, the tone will change. So just keep listening. <laughs> or the tone will change because I hit my hand. One of the two. Boom. It, it was like right at the end there, it bounced really hard because it hit metal on metal on the back side. So now I know that one's in all the way. Flip it up and get this uh, other side. This one will be a little easier for you to see because it'll be up here on top. I'll try to move the camera a little bit. So this one goes down in here. Same thing, I gotta choose the right size driver. You want it to be as big as you can without doing that. So that one's too big. This next one down. Perfect. It just, well, that one might be a little too big too. Let me go down the next one. That one's going to have to be good enough. It has a little bit of a rock to it, but that should be okay. Um, that's not ideal, but it should work. Let me get this. So this little piece just goes on here. And then it has a bolt. That holds that on so it doesn't bounce around. And this is just a set that I borrowed from the local AutoZone. So same thing here. This should just press down in here. Ugh. Nothing special other than making sure you get it all the way down until she's bottomed out. And probably the hardest part is going to be keeping this axle from tipping as I'm doing this. Get you in here. Right, that should be a good view. And again, you got to make sure you get it started straight. I'm a little high over here.
go. Definitely want that going straight. And it is not straight at the moment. Not to hit my hand here. All right. There we go. It's going nice and straight, so I'm just going to keep going. Uh, best just to, to keep it moving until you hit the bottom. And right there. If you, you can hear that tone change and she bounced. Again, that was metal on metal contact at the bottom. And this aluminum, if you're worried about it, all it did was it smeared a little bit of material onto the bearing. But again, this aluminum is softer than your bearing. So as long as everything's clear when you put clean when you put it in here, you won't damage anything. Now I can see down in here, and I can see that that other bearing from the other side is seated. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna flip this down and make sure that the back side of this bearing truly is seated. Um, all right, I gotta go the other way. Yeah, and I can see down in there, I can see where it's metal on metal. So I know that those bearings are seated. And that took, what, all of five minutes. So I'm gonna go return this to the store now, get my Get my money back it's on a rental program pretty much all the parts stores do it um, AutoZone seems to have a really good selection here in St. Cloud so that's where I always go is to AutoZone so um, that made quick work of that um, and again you don't want to damage those so don't use a brass rod on it the brass rod bounces too much um, and this aluminum won't damage anything so if you're doing a lot of them I recommend getting a set but I do so little. Uh, this is my first time actually borrowing the driver set. I borrowed the uh, the puller set for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the ball joints and stuff like that. Pushing and pulling other things on and off. That might not be a bad set to own. It's actually two sets. Um, but I'll leave the number for this driver set um, if you're interested in doing this. This, I mean, super easy to do. Uh, you side. You don't have to have anything special other than the hammer. So. And, well, and this set. So, all right, I'm gonna return that now. We'll get back to work on getting this thing assembled. All right, a little bit of a delay getting out in the garage today. We had the power was out. A little too cold to work last night. All right, so did a little bit of research and was recommended that so the Lucas Oil Products, uh, ADW90 Gear Oil, excellent for use in limited slip differentials. Um, so we're going to give this a try. Um, the reason I wanted to buy some now, I, obviously I'm not going to fill it up right now, but you want to lube up your bearings before you assemble everything. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up, get these lubed up, and get this start assembling. Pretty cold out here in the garage today. This stuff is almost like honey, but you definitely want to lube this stuff before you put it together. So that's all clean and lubed. Obviously, I put a little bit of lube on the inside of that lip. All right. Flip this over. I'm going to put this 2x4 under here so I can get the pinion in there um, and get the yoke on. So, apparently this does not fit on there very well. 
I mean, it fits on there tight, so uh, it's going to take a little finagling to get that on there. I'm hoping just some white tapping with the other block of wood here should go on. I didn't want to try to put it up together up there, obviously, because then it'd be stuck. So uh, let's see what we can come up with. She came apart. some difficulty. Oh yeah, she's going on there. I need everything up. See, to get it on far enough so I can get some threads on here. Alright, so I just got this finished tightening. The bolt that came with this kit was an inch and five sixteenths instead of an inch and a quarter. And I couldn't use an impact socket because it was too fat, so I had to buy another socket that was three-quarter drive. Well, it was just a mess, so I didn't show any of that. I do have my inch-pound thing here. Um, should be in the metal. I have no way to connect it to the metal, but I've got uh, a solid like 18 inch-pounds, and they recommend like 15. 15 to 25 or something like that on new bearings and that's exactly what I've got some new bearings so um, this is in here real good I had to sneak up on it obviously I've got the new crush sleeve in there and I've got the seal in here I pre-oiled all those bearings so we are good to go now I can go on to the next step man that was really a pain <clears throat> this nut being a different size I mean I guess I kind of appreciate it being extra, extra sturdy, um, but I didn't have that socket, so that was another fifteen dollars by the time I bought a socket and adapter to go on my half inch <laughs> torque wrench or uh, half inch uh, impact. And you can use an impact; you just gotta sneak up on it. Just be really, really careful because um, they went from loose to tight pretty quickly I mean a lot not instantly but you know I had backlash and as soon as that backlash was gone it wasn't more than about a quarter turn and that was enough uh, uh, that was enough tension on those bearings to get that set so now actually I can tilt this down these are uh, jacks uh, jack stands for this so they're actually working out pretty good I'm gonna wipe out the inside of this one more time and then I'll get the rest of my pieces well I think I might call that a video for the week um, I don't it's Monday and I don't have a video out yet I have today off so I can work on this I can work on it more this weekend I want to take my time getting this carrier in here because I want to do it correctly um, I kind of know what I'm doing I've watched some videos so I'm a YouTube expert um, but I want to take my time I also want to make sure I have content for my channel I, so I think I'm going to just cut it short here. I appreciate everybody watching, liking, subscribing. I've got a bunch of new subscribers in the last week. Really appreciate it. Um, if you've done one of these and you have some suggestions for me from here on out, um, they'd be appreciated. I'll be, I'll, I'll be watching my email and everything. Um, just message me through the channel. Uh, but uh, it's coming along. Uh, this is definitely something you can do yourself. Uh, I, my impact driver works really good. Uh, otherwise, you have to have a special, you have to make a, a piece to hold the, uh, the pinion so it doesn't turn. But the impact driver is kind of nice because then you can just hold the yoke and it'll spin it on there. Um, and that seemed to work pretty good. And I seem to have decent control over the tension. And if you do mess it up, I mean, as long as your yoke doesn't stick like mine does on here, you can just back it off, get a new crush sleeve, try it again. Not a big deal, so... Anyway, uh, thanks again. See you in the next video. Have a great day.